today we're here for the for a meeting of the Waterbury Select Board on Monday, January 9th, uh, 2023, at the Edward Steele Community Room for the purpose of conducting business for the Select Board. Uh, the first order of business is to <coughs> approve the agenda. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Yes. If you don't mind, I'd like to add just a brief discussion about uh, follow-up on uh, Lieutenant White's discussion with the select board the other night. I've had some things come to the surface that made me want to further that a little bit, so I'd like to talk to the board about it. Okay. And Under select board items? And I have a couple of other uh, changes. Uh, the Waterbury Rotary folks requested a movement. Uh, they're not going to be meeting with us today. They'll be meeting with us on the 23rd. And I just received tonight a uh, 2022 equalization uh, study results from the Vermont Department of Taxes, and it'll probably be just a five-minute item. So if we could add that in, this, in the select board items. DNA. Any? any other changes? There being none, I uh, ask I'll, for. I'll move that we approve. <clears throat> yep, thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? We have a motion and we have a second to approve. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Oh, motion sorry. passes. Um, Glenn. Oh. Uh, Next item is the consent agenda item, which would be the minutes of the January 3rd, 2023rd meeting and the certificate of highway miles, which requires a signature. I'm not as familiar with this as I'm sure perhaps some of you are, but I guess it does require your This is, um, there's some state aid in the public works budget right. that's based on our highway miles that they say per mile. According to mm -hmm. Bill Winters, every year. Yeah, standard. Yeah. Water yeah. Plate stuff. It's just a yearly thing that comes before us every year. Uh, I'll move to approve the consent agenda. Uh, Thank you. Do we have uh, a second? Yeah, I'll second it. And the one note, sorry for the minutes that I just saw, is that the designated downtown applies to the whole town, not just RW, which is a one word fix. I think it's fine. I just wanted to say it. Okay, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion on the consent agenda other than we'll probably all, all sign? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Now we're at the point of the agenda where we welcome any of the public just to feel free to come. Yeah, I can't hear anything in Zoom. Land. I'm sorry if I'm interrupting. Oh, we're muted. Sorry, no, it wasn't Glenn. Thank you for bringing that to me. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Now I guess we got our mute fixed. Uh, now we're at the point of our discussion where we invite the public, either on Zoom or in person, if they have anything that are not related to any um, agenda items. If anyone wishes to uh, speak, please uh, raise your hand or and come forward. Anything in Zoom? Uh, there's Glenn Anderson. There. Glenn. Glenn's hand may be up to bring attention to the... Um... Yeah. yeah, actually, I put it down, but then I put it back up. So I uh, just wanted to let you guys know that I probably will be sending um, an email around this week. Um, there, basically, long story short, uh, has been some information that's come back from the hunger ravines case um as far as the courts and at the same point we've discovered a number of significant artifacts that had not occurred in that uh court case so since then we've discovered some potentially neolithic uh finds pretty amazing stuff that i'll share in detail but i just wanted to make you aware of that here so hope you're all well hope you had good holidays and let's have a great new year yeah Thanks. Mike, we appreciate that extra information. Is there anyone else in the public that wishes to say anything? 
If not, we'll move on to select board items. Uh, first item, because we're passing over the uh, Waterbury Rotary, is a senior citizen. Um, Maureen White and Justin Blackman, do you want to come forward? It's always good seeing Justin. He's wearing, always wearing his shorts. <laughs> Prepared for the weather always. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> So uh, I'm Justin Blackman, I'm chair uh, of the Senior Center, and with me is... Hi, Maureen White, I'm the treasurer of the Library Senior Center. So if we may, first of all, um, can I thank you for the invite uh, to coming along this evening. Um, so I think important is uh, a little note that in the last year, uh, since our, our last uh, uh, presentation here. Uh, we've taken on board the suggestion at that time uh, that we undertake a full financial audit. Um, at the time we were concerned at the possibilities of a high cost of a full audit, but Maureen has managed to get a very good price on getting that done. The audit was fully undertaken and high marks. No discrepancies, no changes, we're just, we're in good shape. No, so, no findings at all? No findings. It's a full financial audit, too. So, um, Perfect. Yeah. Mm. Congratulations. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> most people know that Meals on Wheels is the biggest uh, program we undertake. Um, a hot <coughs> meal prepared five days a week and delivered by our, uh, by our volunteer drivers. And on a Friday, that, that delivery may also include two extra frozen meals to get people through the weekend. So if I may, I'd like to run through a few numbers um, important for, for what we do. So first off, the start off, last year's numbers, uh, the number of meals delivered, 18,423. Um, and I think very important to point out that every single one of those uh, deliveries includes somebody at the door in person. Um, I think that's ever such an, an important thing uh, these days to remember. Um, so looking at, at probably the biggest number of them all is our budget for our entire costs in the, in the year moving forward. That's $2,014,257. And that, that's absolutely everything. That's our rent, our heat, our light, paying our employees, and all of our food costs baked into that cost. Can yes. $214,257. You don't have a written report for us on financials. I did. We, I sent it. I sent it to Bill last month. Oh, okay. He's no longer with us. We'll, we'll get that to you. <laughs> I okay. sent the, um, the budget, the fiscal 23 budget, and then he wanted the budget versus actuals for fiscal 22. I thought you all had it. We'll make, make sure first thing tomorrow morning we've got copies of all of that for you. Okay. So if we take our total number of meals and our total cost, we could consider that as a cost per meal of $11.63. Um, so Many people will assume that Meals on Wheels is paid for from the government, uh, federal government doing that. Well, not really. The reality is the Older Americans Act does, it, does funnel some money through the chain to us, and that, uh, that contributes $3.80 towards each of those meals. And that comes to us from the CBCOA, that's the Central Vermont Council on Aging who funnel us that money and also give a little bit of assistance to us. Um, uh, we also have a lot of report writing we have to do in return for that. Um, they also help us with a little bit of menu design, making sure it's a, a completely balanced menu that we are providing to the seniors. So if we do our math, that means we have a shortfall of $7.83 per meal that we are uh, needing to cover somehow. 
So the senior centre themselves, um, in a combination of donations that come in and our annual appeal letter as well. Uh, we anticipate and hope being able to get $61,000 in from that. That's how it appears on our budget for this year. So the leftover chunk from that is $57,000, and that's what we end up asking our towns uh, from Waterbury and the surrounding towns who we serve. That is the chunk that we end up asking our towns for. So, uh, if we look at Waterbury itself, uh, based on last year's numbers, just Waterbury is a delivery number of 14,259 meals. Each of those included, as we mentioned, with an informal wellness check, uh, making sure uh, our, our customers are, are doing well, and it's surprising how many times there is feedback. Uh, little things we can do or uh, little suggestions we can help with to get help for, uh, help for sometimes uh, small but in increasingly larger questions that come back as well. Um, so of those deliveries, 67% uh, of the deliveries made are to the Waterbury area. Um, and then another couple of numbers for you. So our own costs for food, for instance, are up by 6%. Uh, we keep very, very close tabs on our food costs. Um, our, our chef manager, uh, Donna, does a great job in taking advantage of uh, what happens to be seasonal, what happens to be available right now, and any <coughs> donations that come in. But still, even with that, we are seeing a 6% increase in our costs there. The other thing we know is that over the last year, we have a 13% increase in the number of deliveries we are making. Um, we can't be exactly sure why that, why that increase. Uh, we would hope that some of it is because um, we are being good in other ways and the community is using the resource to help our seniors stay in their homes. That's, that's obviously a, quite a big chunk of what we would like to be doing here, keep the seniors in their homes, the places they, they want to be. Um, there also might be a chunk of, of seniors struggling on the pure financial end of things. And if you can get some of your meals from Meals on Wheels, it augments somewhat what you might have to be paying at the store for your own grocery. So there may be some of those two going on. We really don't know exactly which is which. So overall, uh, that means we will be requesting a 20% increase uh, of what we will be asking from the town. Uh, and that would make that total ask amount from the town to $39,000. I'd like to just assure everybody that every penny is used very wisely. Um, there is really nothing, nothing wasted. Uh, everything is used ingredient-wise, money-wise, pennies-wise. Uh, there really is no wastage going on amongst that. Uh, with that, that's the end of my numbers there. Uh, I'd like to ask, are there any questions? Well, since you don't have the reports, that's going to get a little tough. It is. <laughs> well, I do have a few questions right off. I assume your cost of meal of eleven sixty three per meal, that includes your staff to prepare, the drivers, you know, what you pay them, et, we et cetera. Don't, we don't pay any drivers. Our drivers are all volunteers. All volunteer? All volunteers. Occasionally, okay, I didn't know if you pay them like a mileage or something. We, we, we offer it. We offer the IRS but most rate, of them but most of them don't take it, so or they don't, they don't request it. So um, that's just everything in our budget. Um, the okay. um, yeah, you know, the meal cost and also <coughs> the uh, cost of the containers. The, the meals go out. Right. And, um, that's gone up like a lot this year too. We got a note from our vendor said that um, depending on their their which item, their prices were going up from five to fourteen percent. Um, 
So the that's a six percent increase is re you know you, you look at the national news they're talking right. about foods yeah. up like fourteen yeah. percent so yeah. six percent when, when I looked our food costs went up six percent but the national average at that time was like ten point six so right Don, like Justin said Donna does an incredible job we get we get donations from Community Harvest you know when they go out and clean the fields and, and bring things back so we have all these misshapen vegetables that the volunteers have to somehow. <laughs> Um, you know, to, we don't waste anything. We've got so much stuff in the freezer that she will use all year long. And we do get some donations from the food bank. Um, it's whatever. And there are even like local people that have too much produce in their gardens. They'll bring us some of that. And all right. I was going to ask you that if you're, if you're, if you can accept uh, certain If we, if we know who it is, um, a lot of it comes from somebody who was one of our volunteers. So if we know who it is, we know where it's coming from. Um, especially if it's something that's going to be cooked. You know, we're not going to serve raw food that we don't know where it came from. Um, Donna's just incredible with what she does for food and, you know, the leftovers and just, you know. Um, um, and I, I think our budget's pretty tight. Um, we have, you know, one good thing that came out of the audit, too, is that we have really good um, internal processes for a small organization. Um, um, so there's no waste. Um, I know where every penny is. And the other thing about the audit is we did the full audit this year. Um, we're going to do a full audit every three years. It was recommended in between we're going to do a CPA review, which is not the full audit, but somebody's looking at our books, the same firm, so that because we're a small organization and I'm basically it. So having somebody look at it is, is really important to make sure everything ties down. There's just not the testing, so it's a little bit, it's less money. So. Uh, Justin, last time you were here, uh, we discussed the potential of using some ARPA funding yes. to re-equip your kitchen. Is that still a it, live uh, request it, as well? It's, it's still live with us, but it's actually really difficult. Uh, the, the first uh, the first few attempts to have companies uh, come and come and talk to us hasn't hasn't been really strong. Uh -huh. um, if anyone's got suggestions of, of the right right people to talk to uh, to get quotations uh, like that, we we're all ears. To just find a contractor to yeah. give you an estimate. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, we don't have a director right now. We haven't had a director for about a year. We've Maybe had I a can couple help you with that. As far as finding somebody that might be able to reputable that might be able to. Awesome. Put something forward for you. Yeah. And, and any ideas? Uh, you know, um, Ron Gilas out of Rotary. He's probably no people. That's possible. Uh, uh, reaching out to a, a couple of people I know in the restaurant business have uh, already suggested names not to not to go and talk to. Um, <laughs> but I'm struggling with the names of people to actually go and talk to. <laughs> And just doing the paperwork for doing a grant is, is difficult. Like I said, we don't have a director. Yeah. And the board's doing all the work, but there's only so much we can do. We're all volunteers. So it's, it's a tough thing to go after that much of a grant. I mean, we'll try. Uh, Eric Ornstead uh, is building a, a whole new facility for Head of the Wood uh, at the uh, old bank building over here. And I don't know if you're familiar with him, but I could put you in touch with him. Uh, yeah. He's the uh, CEO of... Uh, Head of the wood and one of our one of our board members is is very is familiar with Eric and he's a good friend. Okay, I mean so, just yeah. not that he would necessarily be the person, but he knows a lot about Eric. Would probably know, know a lot of the people involved. Yeah, we'll try that avenue as well. Yeah. So you will come back with a request once you get a. I that, that's still the plan at the moment to get some some better numbers, more accurate for you. Okay. So you said that. Uh, the Agency of Aging only supplies you with about 25% of your budget. Um, with the inflation rate being what it is and our beloved government creating most of it, I'm surprised that they haven't upped the ante on, on the, the, the percentage that you guys are... One would hope, <laughs> but I haven't seen it. I think there would be it, some sort of cold. It, it, it's, it's what that is. We know that that's in place for this year. And the we, problem, yeah, yeah. the CDCOA too, we, at the beginning of the year, we, we put in a request for the number of meals we think we're going to. And we have a contract with CDCOA at the beginning of the year, so we know what our checks are. Um, and this year, I, I did a lot of analysis on trends where I thought it was going, and I was kind of guessing over 19,000 meals at least. And 
they came back with 18,000. They, they just gave a 3% three, three rate increase. I don't know why. So that's what we have. Yeah. And they, they can pay the overage if we go over our contracted amount, but they don't have to. So kind yeah. of a tough situation. So, so we could go over our contracted amount and only get 380 a meal, and then we don't get even 380. If you do the math the other way, um, so it's just, it is what it is. There's a, there's a potential for being left in the hole if the program is really successful and delivers loads and loads of extra meals, we, we could get left in the hole a little bit, but we'll see. I'll so you're projecting to serve 19,000? I, when I looked at the numbers, the numbers have gone up significantly in the last three months, like not just Waterbury, everywhere. So when I looked at the numbers and kind of looked at the trends, I was thinking like 19,500, like another 1,000 meals for the year. But, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. You, you never know when, when people, it seems like, like Justin said, people are staying on the program longer, whether they're in their house longer, whether, you know, because usually it's like people drop off and new people come on, it kind of, you know, flows, but it seems to be gradually increasing, which is great. Well, there's a, a for whatever the reason. Baby boom. Uh, We're all getting older. Bulge yeah. heading in your direction. And, and, and some of it just pure medically. <coughs> We're doing better at keeping our, our seniors going and in their houses for longer as well. And uh, it, it, every bit we can do to keep them in the houses is proven to be actually cheaper for the whole community in the long run. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so do you see any that. family support? Um, in, in, helping yeah. the, in helping of those seniors? Yeah. Um, it, it's a complete mixture. Um, there are some people who say, oh, oh, I'm all right at the weekend. I have my family come in and visit me then, but they don't see anyone during the week, for example. But it's, it's all different. I have two questions. Um, the numbers that you gave, they're all for the, just for the Meals on Wheels program, not, because you have some other programs. So, so uh, <coughs> the Meals on Wheels is, dramatically the the number Mind one the others are very, are very very small for okay. instance other things we we might do uh, don't really have a, a cost if any so for instance uh, playing dominoes a right. couple, couple of days a week no real cost right. um, putting a movie on uh, every now and again doesn't really have have too much of a, an impact on that yeah. um, so just trying to bake everything into this per meal cost kind of uh, a way of just showing the, the, the size of the, <coughs> of, the, of the challenge, really. Yeah. Just to clarify, too, the 18,423 includes congregate meals. So we're open five yeah. days a week that people can come in and have a meal. Mm -hmm. I've um, been there. They're good. <laughs> it's good food. Um, you qualify? Um, you don't have to. Oh, okay. We invite everyone. Hmm. Come on down. And it, it could be every day of the week. Wednesdays is most popular. Uh, tends to have uh, the, the, ro the, the roast dinner of some kind. Um, come on down, uh, sa we, sample the menu. Right, we're not allowed to charge, yeah. we can't, but we have but there's a donation. There's a donation. Mm -hmm. um, At least 1163. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, I get that. Yeah. 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 I kind of go around and look at people and you know, <laughs> <laughs> you lie. You know? now, um, how, how from the 1163, how does that compare to other locally oriented Meals on Wheels sites. Are you? It's it's similar? hard to. S I don't have their financials, so I don't. You don't know. talk to other. We, yeah, the the meal costs. Well, I do join a group of CVCUA. It's, it's different um, meal sites around, depending on how they you know book their items and you know whether they uh, have you know I know some sites have paid drivers. Um, they have more kitchen staff. They have larger staff. I mean, it's just it's really hard to compare. So. It's um, also some sites won't won't be delivering a, a kind of home home cooked hot meal. Some of them are a, very much uh, a carton of juice, uh, yeah. a, a packet of crackers. Well, I do know it's, it's a very mixed across the board. Some some sites, well, Agewell, which is in um, 
Chittenden County, which is their provider, um, they don't prepare their own meals. They're not home meals. Right. They, they buy them from the vendor. So ours are, honest to goodness, lumpy mashed potatoes kind of home cooked meals. So um. They're good. I don't know about the <laughs> delivery one, but the ones on site are. It's the same food. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, very yeah, good. Yeah, it's the same food. She, we have an incredible chef. She's a good cook. <clears throat> so it sounds like the, the bulk of your request is, is about 8000 bucks. Um, it's sixty five hundred yes. more. So it went from thirty two five up to thirty nine, which right. is exactly twenty percent. Um, so I can send you these reports. Um, just quickly, fiscal twenty two according to budget, we ended up the year with about um, about a thousand dollars surplus, which is a good place to be, you know. But it's it's kind of like our because we didn't have a director, our costs were way down and our revenues were down because the donating donations were much lower than they were the year before so we ended up in a good place but because you know we had you know lower personnel costs and then we also had you know lower donations coming in so trying to um you know we've just done our annual appeal we took a different approach to it um it's it's going well um we just sent another appeal out to local businesses and asked for you know donations that way so we feel like we're trying different things and trying to get some more money coming in we Hiring a director, or are you we're going to, to start the one? process again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, we had two candidates last year; both fell through for very different reasons. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a tough hiring. Um, what do you What are you uh, offering to a candidate for a directorship? Um, well, that's we it. Kind of, we kind of pull on the uh, like how wonderful it is to have. Must have a range or something like that. We do. We've kind of gone back and forth. I don't know if I should speak to it in a public meeting. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it's, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> our, our, full, our full package is, is difficult, so um, we're not able to offer a 401k and things like that, that you would hope if you were uh, top class um, <coughs> candidate planning to relocate, for, for example. So we're not able to do that. It means we are restricted somewhat, somewhat in the type of candidate. I would put it this way: as as uh, as very detailed and, and tight budget that you operate on, uh, I would say that their package would probably have to be that of as reasonable as possible, right? Yeah, uh, because you, you just. You don't have the ability. We don't have anything to offer. Yeah. yeah. It's almost someone who has yeah, a yeah. second job in a family. Or right. somebody who's recently retired that just wants right. to get the time to help. Yeah. But, you know, you, you, you pull at the heartstrings. You know, <coughs> we're helping seniors and it's a good cause. And, you know. Well, it's amazing to me. R.W. Karen Nevin was just in here the other day talking about R.W. and they operate under the same kind of restraints, you know, that their tight budget, everything is very kept on top of and detailed uh, and to see you doing as, that as well. It, it tears at my heart because we have institutions in this country that throw good money after bad constantly uh, and probably a lot less important type issues than what you two are, are dealing with and uh, my thanks and my heart goes out to you for, for your efforts and I appreciate it. Yeah. I applaud it um, and I'll see what I can do to to help you out with this kitchen request and uh, maybe some other things. Yeah, right. thank you. If you could, if you send us financials, if you could send us a copy of the audit report, if that, I can do that. that'd be really helpful. And I think you're being really smart by having one audit and then like the interim check-ins, because I think for your size organization, but I think an audit is important every few years, just in this day of an age of you know, embezzlement and stuff like I, that. I, you I, want to I, see every, everything totally above board and it's kind of, you know, auditors. I've are been good. doing this kind of work my whole career and I know things are fine, but it yeah. needs somebody else to look at. I used it. to work with mm -hmm. audits all the time and, yeah. and they're, so, they're necessary yeah. evils. But to have somebody else look at it and... and it's a second it's just, set of eyes. Exactly. I'm fine with that. I think it's a great idea. So. Any of us could be in this position at some point <coughs> needing yeah. new services. So it's, it, you know, some of us are could be just a stone throw away from it. Uh, it's, okay. it's a fact of life, you know, getting older and, and uh, having to deal with things that 
none of us are accustomed to it at the age, currently at the age that we are at, you know. It's, uh, Try to get Fresh Direct or any of these other home delivery services. You look at what the costs of mm -hmm. them are. It's just, in, in, I know that from experience mm -hmm. with my, my, my stepmom. You know, mm -hmm. they're incredibly expensive. Yeah. You know, um, I have a question for you Thank guys. you for what you guys do. If you don't mind. Um, I'm just wondering, so last year when we put a request in, part of it went in your budget and part of it went in the special <coughs> article. Um, right. Just like, how do you decide what goes how much? Because last year it was 20,000 that we were in the special article and it was like head and shoulders above everybody else. And I was so worried that wasn't gonna pass by the voters and they did, they're, they're wonderful. How do you decide what goes in your budget and what goes in the special article? Is there? I think it's the will of, you know, one, it's transparency. Mm -hmm. I, I think most people are going to be fairly sympathetic mm -hmm. to a senior center mm -hmm. and, and what their budget's going to be. Mm -hmm. But I think it's being transparent because, again, people look through spreadsheets on line items and you know it's very easy to kind of bury those things mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. especially I think we went based upon historical records mm -hmm. what what the town was supporting mm -hmm. and then it was just something that was a reaffirmation that mm -hmm. the taxpayers mm -hmm. you know I don't think we've we rarely ever see any of the special articles ever right. go down right. right you know I, just, I, I, I worried a lot because it was 20,000. But you're right. Everybody, you're, everybody else was like 500. And, exactly. And I, I really sweat that one out. <laughs> so. Was there history? Because I have the same question. I have my little arrows going sideways. 12.5 so, in the budget, 20 in the article. So, um, and it looks like Tom has already proposed a 20% increase on the 12.5 in the budget. So, which so would it's be been about you. The town's been giving us around 30 for the longest time and two years ago right. we you went up to we got an extra 2500 and then last year there was no change so it has right but i'm saying that split of what the split of what's in the budget versus the article because i feel like i've heard this too of the question of folks saying like again not saying maybe all of it is in the budget but that line of what the divide is and why i don't i don't have the It's just one of the, you know, a few local nonprofits gets ten funding gets a lot, and yeah. there was a year with I think a twenty five hundred dollar increase, and there's been a few of those. So I think at some point the select board just decided to put it to the voters rather than embed it. Mm -hmm. well, interesting. Transparency is, is is great too. I think one year, some years back, there was a, a twenty thousand increase. I think that's that's how it became an article. There was a big increase one year. Right. You know, five, six, seven years ago, somewhere in that time frame. I think that is because I think it was like ten thousand for a long time, and then, I, then it jumped to thirty. So that. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, you have the same question in front of you for twenty twenty three. If it's a thirty nine thousand dollar request in total, how much of it do you want it? If any, do you want to embed in the budget, and how much of it, then do you want to put in a question? And actually, I think it's going to benefit you now that we're going back to in person town meetings. Because people could speak to things as to what the va like you guys could speak to the value of your program before you know last couple of years it was like it, it was a lot easier to you know f you know put the little marker on no you know no one knows that you do that it's like you know you don't hear too many no's out and out in the open but you know that you know when people usually hear someone's story and what you're doing, why you're asking for additional funds, they're usually fairly sympathetic unless it doesn't make sense. And, and that's going to be a, a, a possibility this year? Yes. Oh, okay. yeah, we're having a full in-person town meeting <coughs> like, like it's always been. Until we get something that someone wants to change to go to all Australian ballot, mm -hmm. which my preference, I, I think it's great that we meet in person. You can follow Duxbury, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say, to be clear, I think Mike is speaking for the board, but I would say I don't think we've actually had that discussion, though I yeah, think our sense is discussion. that we all agree with what Mike just said, but yeah. just to state. Um. But, and in general, the, the items that are on the uh, article are independent nonprofits that are requesting funds from the town. It's not uh, it's usual not town expenses. Town. It's not like right. little exactly. budgets, like so much for a you know, greater or something like that. Absolutely. It's just that 
in comparison to the twenty thousand compared to the two hundred fifty dollars no, I mean, yeah. that everybody else was asking for. It just mm -hmm. I, I really was afraid people were going to say no to that one. But you you have had I think the largest segment of that for a number of years, and the town has generally approved it. Right, and the history in general is once it's not just in Waterbury, but most towns is once articles are approved for a few years, the tendency is just put them in the budget and assume mm -hmm. that you know, the voters had their say for several years, so at a certain point they're just embedded. Mm -hmm. Okay. That may, that seems to make sense. I don't think we have ever done that. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> <think, laughs> I think they've gone on forever. <laughs> That gets us to lunch, so the grade, well, there's no more grades, but they could serve their lunch. Okay. Yeah, talk. And I assume you're asking for the same increase from the other towns as well. Um, some up, some down. Um, because of different delivery numbers in different towns, so it varies a little bit. Mm -hmm. but like yeah. some towns actually went down, so I didn't feel right asking for you know, mm -hmm. the big increase. Um, you know, food costs went up, the deliveries went down, so it was kind of a, you know, but other, <coughs> some towns we had asked for more money, so. Roger. Tom, on the uh, ARPA request, uh, when would we need to see that in order to put it in the uh, 2000 uh, budget, uh, 2023 so budget? The warning has to be published 40 days before town meeting day. We have to have it on the 30th of January. So, yeah. Not much time if you were going to fund that. So, I mean, right. you want your kitchen, and we're going get to be spending some of this money next year as well, but just FYI. Yeah, I guess my question to that point is are ARPA funds eligible for this sort of thing? Yeah, we, we did that whole process where we declared a revenue loss. Yeah. Um, but this is a special article. How does that fall under? No, the kitchen would be an <coughs> offer request, but I don't think oh, they're, 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 not they're base, fund, their I base funding. I thought Roger had. No, I was talking about the kitchen. Okay, okay. Right. Or re -equip, re -equipping. Any other questions for? Uh, I just have one quick one. So there's also a special article um, for $1,000 for RSVP. Is that also you? Our RSVP? Yeah. No, uh, oh, RCP okay. is retired senior, senior volunteer. volunteers. But they they, they volunteer. find our volunteers, but they are okay. actually they work through CBCOA, so they're <coughs> totally separate. Okay. And other than the fact that they find volunteers, that's more to help people and businesses and stuff like that. <clears throat> and they also do when we do have volunteers, they will run the background checks for us um, for the drivers. So I could send the reports. Who should I send them to? You can send them to me if you'd like, okay. and I'll circulate them. Okay. Sure. I'll do that. I made a note to get them from Bill, so whichever I can, one of you I can, gets to me first. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy to send them. It'll be a rush now. <laughs> yeah, when are when are reports from all the nonprofits due? It's, that date's um, coming. I've already got most of them. Okay. I've, I've started that process today. So by the reports, do you mean the letter that goes in that little booklet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. we got to work on that. Yeah. Do, you, do you know? I need them. You need them, I need them. now? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, I need them by the end of the month, okay. basically. Yeah. Got it. We'll, we'll get it to you. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Any other questions? All right. Uh, thank you for thank coming you. in. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. <coughs> Give a thanks to all the volunteers, too. They're yes. Very, very <coughs> all, the, all the volunteers, drivers especially, yeah. or everyone. Not only for food, it's, it's just the check-ins for people, I think, is yeah. really critical. Okay, we'll move on to the next item. The Mad River Resource Management Alliance. John, Mr. Recycling Malter. Got to engage in some trash time. Hello. How you doing? Come on down. Give me some. You can recycle this. <laughs> <laughs> After we read it? <laughs> Preferably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are they sets? Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm yeah. giving mine away. Sorry, there's on. three pages. I got it. One, <laughs> one. I worked hours. I think I got there. I was too busy showing you my old agendas that I printed the <laughs> meetings on because I was okay. really proud of myself. Do you got one, yeah, All right, one, two, one. three. <laughs> Lots of packet. We should have two budgets and a cover sheet. Thank you. And I think it's great that uh, the senior center is using uh, not quite perfect fruit and vegetables in their uh, 
choices for uh, you know keeping stuff out of the composting world and using it for its intended purpose, which is Cleaning. something that's done a lot in Europe, but is just barely getting acceptability in the United States. Well, once again, it's a pleasure to come here and talk trash with you guys. Um, Alec Tuscanese, the Waterbury representative, and he's here to throw rocks at me if I say anything wrong. Uh, I just wanted to give you a brief update on what we're up to and uh, answer any questions, hopefully, and uh, you know, go from there. And as always, our biggest and best bang for our buck with the, our uh, communities is our household hazardous waste collections. And uh, in 2020, with COVID in 2021, with contract uh, problems with getting personnel, we were only able to hold one event. This past year, we held two events, and there was pent up demand. And uh, we had 424 households that participated in uh, this past year's collections and generated over 12 tons of stuff that goes bump in the night in folks' basements and garages and barns. So we were pretty happy with that, even though it cost us over $54,000 for those two events. Uh, and the challenge has been and continues is that there is a consolidation of contractors with the expertise and staff for doing this. Uh, the company that we used uh, four years, five years ago uh, was called Clean Ventures. Clean Ventures, uh, through mergers and acquisitions, became part of Republic Waste. Uh, this past year, U.S. Ecology, which is the one we're using now, was merged with Republic Waste. So now we have met the enemy and he is us. We, we now have uh, another fewer uh, uh, waste collection companies, processing companies to deal with. But at the same time, you know, they're, they've expanded their, their reach, so to speak, with having, you know, more, more resources, but less presence right here on the ground. Uh, and we are finding that many of the uh, contractors, uh, or many of the, <coughs> the districts, alliances, and individual towns are drawing on the same folks. So there's major uh, conflict as far as dates for holding these events. And uh, last year, we held our spring collection on April 2nd. My fingers were crossed that we weren't going to have a snow day. Uh, for our hazardous waste. And our fall event was on August 20th. Uh, I had to paint a couple of leaves to make it look like fall. Uh, this year, we're going to be able to hold our spring event on May 13th, which is pretty much the second Saturday in May, which is where we had historically been. And our fall event will be October uh, 13th which will be the second Saturday in October. Uh, we used to hold the fall one the first Saturday in October, but I'm happy with being able to just kind of harmonize our, our schedules a little bit better. Um, food, scraps, composting, being friends with the bears. Uh, we have been holding uh, workshops on composting uh, hold one in Waterbury here and one down in Waitsfield at the uh, <coughs> municipal office there. Uh, gets folks uh, some of the basic information and uh, we do uh, help to uh, get people thinking about composting and diverting waste as well as uh, we sell some of the compost bins that uh, put them into uh, into their backyards. I think the most important thing that I find that I do 
is I give people permission to do something that maybe is a little outside of their comfort zone and taking their waste that they've historically been throwing out and doing something that creates something that's got value. And when they do it and they're successful, it's like a here go moment. It's really kind of exciting. And you know, it's not normal that you would get somebody to walk up to you in a supermarket and say, you taught me how to compost and it worked. And it's really kind of neat that it does and it is. Uh, so yeah, and I think we've been uh, pretty successful. This will be our 26th year of selling compost bins. Uh, this past year we sold 29 of the bins and three green cones. The green cones are for the uh, meats, the greases, the fish stuff, you know, the things that you get out there in the lake, and uh, oils that uh, you wouldn't want to put in with your own composting because of the creator of all kinds of critter problems. Uh, Green Up Day, which is the first Saturday in May, uh, historically has been our big tire collection, working both at the Public Works Garage, <coughs> with Rodney's Transfer Station here in Waterbury, and the Earthwise Transfer Station in Waitsfield. And uh, we've gotten, uh, this year we had 236 Green Up tires that folks brought. You know, the ones that bring them in and have plastic bags over them, I say, I don't really think this is a Green Up tire. <laughs> but we've had some people try that. Uh, but for the most part, it's really just been the, the community effort to Green Up and uh, I always say, you know, we're going to go with uh, people, if they made the effort, we'll give it to them at no charge. And we're charging $5 a tire for most tires. So it's not, it's less than the normal rate and it gives people an opportunity uh, to bring them in. And the challenge is that uh, I need 10 tons of tires to reach a point where I can get a reduced price from the vendor that we're using through the Northeast Resource Recovery Association. And as Justin mentioned, things keep going up and uh, costs keep going up. And that's uh, just one of those challenges that we're seeing in this as well as everything else. Uh, textiles, uh, I think this is one of the more exciting areas that we've uh, gotten into in the last year. Uh, uh, 2021 was our first half year that we did it. And uh, two years ago, we got six tons of stuff. Uh, this was anything that was, was not wet and didn't smell was acceptable. And this year, we collected uh, 24, plus tons of uh, textiles from Earthwise and Rodney's. And uh, literally have had the bins chock a block full uh, two weeks before it was anticipated that stuff was going to need to be picked up. And the company is called Helpsy. And they're out of primarily White Plains, but they've got an operation down in more, uh, Massachusetts. <coughs> And uh, it's really been an additional tool for us to uh, divert stuff from the landfill. What do they do with it once it's diverted? Uh, it goes in the river. Uh, <laughs> it, uh, it, there, there's, there, there's a couple of things. One, it goes to uh, uh, thrift shops. Mm -hmm. they, they break down everything. Everything comes in bags. They have large warehouses. They uh, take and take them out of the bags. They separate the good stuff, the stuff that is not uh, suitable for sale, but still is good. Uh, some of that gets uh, sent to uh, assist organizations overseas. Uh, stuff that is uh, torn uh, or stained and just has no uh, redeeming value uh, winds up going into making rags and uh, uh, just being broken down that way, it's textiles. 
So that's uh, going on. You're going to put Kathy out of business to keep that up. No, actually, Kathy's used the, <laughs> used the service, too. It's, it's something mm -hmm. that I think is uh, beneficial. It's a win-win. And when, if uh, uh, the, uh, the Salvation Army isn't available, she can bring stuff over there, too. But uh, I don't think she's ever going to need to have an issue with all the bags right. that I see in front of her. Yeah, door. She's done well with that. Yes, and it's really helpful. She was our first recycler here in Waterbury, mm -hmm. without a doubt. Um, with our, uh, with our uh, tires, well, we had a total of 10.26 tons that were collected over, over this past year. So once again, I um, continue to be pleased with uh, our participation on, on that. Uh, E-waste, uh, the computers, printers, TVs, monitors, and peripherals, the things that you would think that over the past 20 years or so, 15 years, people would have processed already and gotten out of their closets and you know, said, yeah, I think there's got to be a use for these five-inch floppy disk monitors. I'm sure I can use it someplace. We still got 17 tons of stuff this year over at the state surplus property and the Earthwise facility. So it's less than we had last year. Last year we had about 27 tons, but there's still a lot of stuff. And the stuff is getting taken by Good Point uh, uh, Recycling over in Middlebury, and it is being demanufactured. They're breaking it down and uh, making new components, and as you were, it will at some some of them are being sold as regular computers. So it's, uh, it's uh, the use it up, wear it out, make it do or do without concept being done very well. Um, so those are the, uh, the major initiatives. Our solid waste uh, uh, website, it's madriverrma.org, uh, has been run by my webmaster who informed me last year that she was moving home, which wouldn't have been a problem except home is Finland. And uh, she said, I'll be able to take care of everything. And the first year it was fine, but now they're building a house. And uh, so I've learned how to uh, do some web design stuff. And uh, so far, I haven't blown up Cleveland. Uh, so far. Uh, so that's got a lot of information on it as far as what's out there, what our newsletters have to say, uh, information for the general public on trash and other things of that nature, recycling, composting, uh, listing of the events that we have. And uh, then let's see what else is uh, going on here. I think uh, those are the main, oh, Grow Compost. Yeah, Grow Compost was, uh, uh, I thought that was going really well. They, uh, it was, the, the transportation arm was bought by Casella and they said, we're going to uh, try and establish a facility right there in Moortown and uh, we'll give free uh, food scrap disposal at the facility, and uh, it was, they had a big event in the beginning in uh, August, I think. Uh, but then it became very evident to them that the uh, size of the site was just not suitable for uh, the requirements on monitoring and the costs associated, and they said this isn't going to work, uh, and they shut it down effectively December 1st, but uh, they've, uh, they accepted food scraps right up until then from the uh, folks in town at no charge. Uh, and now those food scraps can go to Rodney's, Earthwise, any of the, uh, uh, the, the haulers that are operating. We've got compost collectors. We've got uh, regular uh, curbside. Uh, haulers that can all take those uh, food scraps for a fee. 
and uh, that's what's going. And then the uh, marketing of uh, compost bins, uh, which make a lovely holiday gift, or if you didn't get one for the holiday, they're still available. Um, so those are, the, those are the main things that we've done over the past year. I think it was about 237 tons of food scraps that <coughs> were collected this year in the Five Alliance communities. Uh, so that's uh, kind of a number to keep in mind. Uh, we have the, uh, the budget, and the other important thing is the election or nomination or re-upping of the representative to our communities so that uh, we move forward. Uh, to go into the budget first, so I like to save the representative for last. Uh, basically, as with a lot of things, we are running a deficit, but we're running a deficit uh, that I think we're covering because we only held the one hazardous waste collection the last two years. So that we do have the, the resources available to cover uh, where we're, we're short in terms of uh, revenue. But at the same time, looking forward, uh, we, we are going to stay with the $7 per capita that we've held for the last uh, three years. But I'm concerned that we may need to revisit that next year uh, in terms of uh, uh, trying to stay at a, uh, at a, at a, at a non-deficit. And that's, uh, that's just the reality of where we are. In fact, uh, our, uh, our uh, expenses are actually down from what we had the year before, but it's, it's still going to be a bit of a challenge. And I think we've got we to gotta, uh, look at uh, these costs. And, and the biggest cost is the hazardous waste. And uh, we're working on that as best we can. My, uh, uh, my assessment is that uh, uh, we are, we're, uh, we're getting a little bit more because we're having the two events this year. So we'll have uh, the revenue from the state for the uh, hazardous waste collections, which does only cover $12,000. Not the fifty-four thousand, but it's a piece of our revenue uh, picture. Um, so basically, uh, besides that, my time uh, is included here. I've got about a uh, four point five percent raise in here this year, which it hasn't been for a couple of years. So uh, that's uh, the other. The other piece of uh, information that's in here, uh, if there's no no benefits with my my program, as far as uh, you know, retirement, health, whatever. But I'm a baby boomer, so I don't need that stuff. I got a senior center that I can go to. <laughs> uh, so basically, what I'm what I'm asking for is uh, our seven dollar per capita, which is what we have had to continue that, and uh, then the reappointment of Alec, who has done a great job, has really been helpful in uh, advice and volunteering. And volunteering is so much more important than advice. Uh, <laughs> but no, nah, he's really been a helpful addition to our group. I don't know what he's getting ready to throw at the back of my head. Uh, so are there any questions? Questions of the board? Yeah. Do you need a vote from us uh, to reappoint Alec uh, this evening? Yeah, both the per capita and the appointment. Yes. Are we in a position? Well, I have a couple of questions yeah, about yeah. dollar amount stuff. Sure. How does your 
tire collection money compared to like Wheels for Warmth? What are they doing? Um, wheels for Warmth? I know they sell some stuff. Right, we don't sell any, well, I shouldn't say we don't sell any. We allow people to come and take. And pick. No, yeah, to pick, because reuse is the <coughs> best form of recycling. Right. But the challenge is, uh, Wheels for Warmth, they have a, a AOT inspector who is checking both the age of the sidewall of the tire, which if, as I recall, if it's more than eight years old this year. Yeah, 2014, I know yeah. they were doing that. Yeah, you can't use them, or you're not supposed to because of the integrity of the, of the, the rubber. Uh, and also, you need to check the, the side walls, which there could be a puncture or something that's not easily seen. Uh, Caselitz has taken all those tires, and they're using them for tire-derived fuel, which is what uh, mon many of our tires are either tire-derived fuel up at a paper mill in Maine, or they're used for uh, civil engineering applications, you know, used in right. playgrounds and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And the second question I have, which is kind of noticeable me, you look at the towns, how come Duxbury is not in the alliance? Do we turn off the TV? <laughs> <laughs> Duxbury was in the alliance. I thought they were at one point. Yes, they were. They chose to leave, and I told them then that it was a big mistake, and I tell them now it's a big mistake, especially when they have their citizens come to our hazardous waste collections, <laughs> right? and I tell them that they're going to have to pay an additional <coughs> amount because they're, no long, they're not in the alliance. Reasonable. And and it's just very frustrating for them, and it's frustrating for me because people, number one, Duxbury has the same zip code as the Alliance at Waterbury right. and Moortown. Uh, so they're getting the same postcard. We send a postcard to every resident in the Alliance because I think it's important to give everybody that opportunity to come and participate. Uh, it is such a disappointment when they decided, and they decided back in about 2008 that it would be, we have a per capita because we cannot issue a surcharge. We are on an interlocal agreement instead of a union district, which is a municipal entity. So we cannot do eminent domain, issue taxes, or, uh, there's one other one. Anyway, that, so any money that we raise is either me getting grants or getting the per capita or individuals paying in, like on our hazardous waste collections, if people bring more than the set amount that we right, they give, required amount. They, they, they then the pay, pay. Uh, right now it's $5 a unit for that additional, but like, and, and, and the beauty is that with product stewardship, and let me just quickly do this because it's, I almost forgot. With product stewardship, we've been able to get things like architectural paints, oil and latex paint, out of the costing us waste stream. Now it's being taken care of by the paint manufacturers. We have the same kind of thing with the e-waste, the, the, the uh, Computer folks are taking care of that. The primary batteries the same way. Thermostats the same the same way. Uh, we are working right now with the uh, Vermont uh, Product Stewardship Council and the Product Stewardship uh, uh, in, in Institute in uh, Boston, uh, working with the legislature on changing. Uh, some of the uh, extended producer responsibility laws to include some of the hazardous waste that is coming to our collections so that the industry is paying for these instead of the municipalities and the individuals. And so that the 
you know, the cradle to cradle instead of cradle to grave, and we pay for the grave, uh, can be accomplished. So that's the part on that. And, and this year, we stand a better chance. It's, it passed the House, uh, but we missed it the, by any amended. And at the end of the year, it was just too many things going on when it went over to the Senate. But we've been talking to some of the folks in the Senate already about this, and we're hopeful that we're going to, if, if Act 250 and a few other things don't bog everything down, that we'll be successful at getting that to uh, occur. And we'll get a, uh, get a bill that by maybe 2025 gets stuff taken out of our financial responsibility. That's the part that I'm hopeful on. And that's where, you know, I'd love to be able to say, oh, by the way, we're going to reduce our per capita. I mean, that's probably un-American and blasphemous. <laughs> but I, I, I do believe that, uh, you know, if we work together, we can't accomplish that. That'd be a first. Yeah. Well, it's not the worst thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John. Okay, you're welcome. A couple questions there for you, Joe Schiff. Um, sure. I'm hearing comments about Coventry's or Casella's generating plants starting to suffer due to the lack of methane production perhaps because of the lack of food scraps or any truth to that and uh, Coventry what's next after Coventry you know what's what's the life expectancy of Coventry and then what's next and I think Coventry right now has, well, I think they're permitted right now for 10 or 11 more years based on current uh, capacity. Uh, but the not in my backyard folks are such that uh, the, uh, the landfill over in Lebanon, New Hampshire, that a lot of the Connecticut River Valley towns on both sides we're going to are having a harder time getting into uh, the Lebanon landfill now so there may be more diversion of stuff coming here the majority of the trash in Vermont is going uh, to Coventry some goes to Glens Falls there's an incinerator in Glens Falls uh, a small amount of it goes over to uh, other parts of New York and a little bit goes to Lebanon. Uh, as far as the uh, generation of methane, uh, it does tend to slow it down, but at the same time, they are also uh, taking sewage sludge and other materials, other organics, and bringing that in. But I think you'll see that uh, there, you know, the, the food scraps. Uh, and vegetative waste accounted for 30 to 35 percent of the waste stream. So uh, it's, it's the uh, sort of Damocles where we're, we're solving one problem that may be causing a little bit of an issue on the other side in terms of how much, uh, how much uh, methane is being able to be collected and used for uh, the generation of the uh, electricity. Um, so if, if food, food scraps are 30% of the waste line that was taken out, has that void been filled, unfortunately, with other stuff that's... You now, know, once again, so as yeah, your life nature, nature abhors a vacuum, mm -hmm. and financially <laughs> that works as well. Uh, they're always looking. I mean, that's as much as Casella is trying to do the right thing. Part of their as as a publicly traded company is to make money, and you make money by filling the hole. So they're always looking for other opportunities to do that. Now remember that landfills aren't the only source of uh, the methane for generation digesters from places like on farm areas are also taking a lot of the uh, 
uh, food scraps and uh, generating methane. So, and then putting things into the uh, grid. So it's not just the landfill, but the landfill is a certainly. You know, my concern was that, you know, a large investment like that to run it out of fuel seems pointless, but, um, and to your point about Coventry life expectancy or permitting for another 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, 10 years, you know, be here and gone. I, I remember a place in Moortown that had a landfill. So I, I guess my question is not more the, the permit for Coventry is what's the life, you know, how soon will that area be exhausted? You know, we have solid waste implementation plans. The plans are designed to look at all the parts of our waste stream and try to minimize what's going in the hole by legislative means, by economic means, by just changing the way we're doing uh, business in total. Uh, packaging is a big part of the, the, the equation that's going in the ground and we have environmental uh, proposals for packaging legislation. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to have attracted the degree of interest as a bottle bill has. And I, I, I think that's wrong. And it's going to be, I don't think we're going to see packaging uh, get traction this year. But it should. And it's that kind of initiative that will extend the life of the landfill. And I think it needs to, uh, I, I think we all need to look at the landfills as a last resort and not a first resort. And uh, yeah, I agree to that. I, I, I don't necessarily believe that you're avoiding my question, question but it's more about, so 30% of the waste stream was food waste that's taken out, now it's being subsidized by something else and you just stated that Coventry's or Casella's goal is to obviously make profit uh, in order to do that they need to fill the hole as you stated mm -hmm. uh, I guess my bottom line question mm -hmm. <laughs> if you have the answer or maybe you don't uh, after the 10 years runs out is that hole filled or is there still more hole to go or are we going to be looking for another place to put it? Uh, well, number one, we've done, the state has done landfill assessments. And as you know, it's not easy to find a willing location to put something that's a Lulu, a locally unaccepted land use. Uh, so I would say the, uh, the number one thing they are doing is trying to uh, maximize the amount of stuff they put in the hole by different techniques, one of which is to compact as best they can and, and do you know the best engineering that they can to deal with that. Uh, number two, try to recycle their way out of as much of the stuff as possible and be able to eke out more space uh, as they uh, go toward that. I mean, they're never uh, looking to close that site out in the short term because it isn't going to be easy to find a new one. And I think... Uh, what has to happen, though, is people need to work with them to handle the waste smarter. You get the things like PFOAs uh, and PFASs that are creating the, the, the dilemmas on groundwater and surface water and water supplies and treatment of water. And you got to just stop making certain things. And that's part of 
everybody here's responsibility. As consumers, we have to stop accepting the status quo when we go out and buy something. We need informed choice. It sounds like a voting thing. You need to have, <laughs> you need to know what you're doing so as to, as you look down the, the, the landscape at where it's going to wind up, that it doesn't wind up in the trash. And uh, I think, you know, Casella has bought into as much of this as possible with his depackaging plant, which kind of was a chicken before the egg, and that they, they, they built this thing, but there aren't rules, they're, they're working on rules now on how to manage it, but there, there needs to be places like that that are minimizing the amount of stuff that winds up going to the trash. You know, you have, you have uh, we took a trip up there uh, back last spring, I think it was, and uh, you know, cases and cases of Ben and Jerry's and cases and cases of uh, uh, different <coughs> kinds of craft beer and cases and cases of Green Mountain Coffee. I mean, all this stuff was, with, with the packaging and the stuff, would have just gone in the trash historically. And now they're emptying it and they're bringing it to digesters and they're processing it. And it's the, just that little amount of the packaging that's left over. Or in the case of the beers, the aluminum Drink it. is being Hmm. is being uh, taken care of. But we, we all are part of the problem and right. part of the solution. Yep. So I'm sorry if I pontificated and <laughs> if I maybe didn't get to you exactly the answer you wanted, but it's going to be a challenge. I mean, it's not. Well, there's other, you know, I consider a landfill just as much of a resource, uh, if that's what you want to call it, uh, as other resources that we're finding that are starting to be more difficult uh, to acquire. Uh, and just, you know, it's to look for, I mean, 10 years is a blink in the eye, really. Well, remember, Chris, we had landfills, we had dumps in every town. When I started in solid waste, I remember going all over the state and uh, you found rats as big as cats. They were, they were well fed. I mean, that was early digestion. Uh, <laughs> they, there were just a lot of things that we've learned from this. I mean, we've improved dramatically from where we were, but at the same time, we still have ways to go. I think as we improve, we also create more. Uh, well, as technology continues to come up with all kinds of new this and that and the other thing. And, uh, I just read, I just read today, in fact, about, you know, the, the, the Teflon. Teflon, you know, in the Reagan years, Teflon was the answer to everything. You know, cooking and all kinds of fiber. But the reality is that uh, Teflon was one of the major sources of the PFOAs. Mm -hmm. And so they just came up with a new ceramic type of uh, frying pan that has all the same characteristics as the Teflon without the Teflon. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing that we as a society need to embrace because then we, 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 we have the material and then we don't have the problem. Unless anyone has any further. Roger, do you have a question? I was going to uh, move to nominate uh, Alec Tuscany as the Waterbury representative for Mad River Resource Management Alliance for 2023. Do we have a second? We have a motion and a second to nominate Alex Tustany for representative to the Solid Waste Alliance. Resource it, Management Alliance. Resource Management Alliance. Not I, waste. I stand corrected. <coughs> I, I hang around with you long enough, I'll eventually get it right. Um, is there any further discussion? If not, all. Uh, Alec, you're willing to do it? No. I'm making sure. Okay. okay. I would assume by him being here, he's okay. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? 
Alex, you're our representative to the trash district. Uh, Alyssa, what about the per capita? Is it on the budget? Uh, so I was going to say it's in the it's, budget, right? It's right, I think budget. We're, that's no a motion budget. No, I don't. It's unchanged from last year. Right. 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 And, and we uh, promise that it's going to go down in the future, so. <laughs> right. But it may go up before it goes down. <laughs> Thanks, John. You're welcome. Thank you all. Much appreciated. Thank okay. you. Okay. Uh, if we could move on to uh, Chris, you have uh, want to have a follow up on Lieutenant White's sure. discussion? Yeah. <coughs> so the other day, while coming off a project up on uh, Ripley Road, I uh, was driving down the road. And I saw something in the road, and I decided to stop and step back up and take a look at it because it looked like a wallet, and it was in fact a wallet. Uh, after observing what was inside, I uh, called the state police, uh, one of our Waterbury officers, and uh, took him a day or so to catch up to me, but he did in fact catch up with me and I turned the wallet over to him. Uh, but I also talked to him a little bit about a couple of other things that uh, were of concern of mine. Uh, I did talk a little bit about the discussion that we had with Lieutenant White here the other night. Um, but my son and I were driving up the ramp here the other day and my son spotted a homeless tent up on the ledges that was barely visible, barely visible. Uh, so I asked the Lieutenant, or informed the Lieutenant about that, or the, I'm sorry, I informed this other officer about that. And there was a few other guys sitting there with me. Uh, and the, the topic of another series of homeless shelters down on Route 2 here, in, in, uh, as you're headed towards the old dump, uh, were also present. And when asking the officer, it, if there's anything being done about it, he said no, because after researching, he in fact knew of these shelters. Uh, after researching their location, they found out that they were on Agency of Transportation's uh, property, purview, I guess. It's, it's the voters of the state of Vermont's property, but, um, and unless Agency of Transportation put it in a complaint, there's nothing that the state police can do about it. That concerns the hell out of me. Um, the fact that they wouldn't put forward some form of formal paperwork, complaint, whatever you Even want on the it. dump road, that's AOT property? Yeah, down here by the Pines, yeah. Um, so, <coughs> and then the other night, while this, this wallet, after close, close, closer, after observing it a little closer, uh, even the state officer, police officer, suggested that it might be somebody from not this country. Uh, and then the other night, while sitting at my house or in the kitchen making dinner, some people walked into the my driveway with headlamps on. Um, my wife was down to my mother-in-law's and my son had seen these people walk up the driveway and they were headed up to my house. Uh, and for some reason stopped and turned around and were running back down the driveway. Well, I didn't know it, but my wife was had spotted them too and came out of my mother-in-law's porch and started hollering to, over to them and they turned and ran like hell down to the drive. I actually thought it was my son coming out to the compost pile because we've got, we got a large compost windrow up there part way up my driveway. for John? Sorry. It's not related to compost anymore. Um, so, but I thought it was kind of odd because my son wouldn't normally wear a headlamp and he wouldn't why would it be coming to the compost pile at night? But anyway, there was somebody on my property that apparently sh knew they shouldn't have been there because they ran like hell once my wife started hollering to find out who it was. Uh, 
So that, with a couple other things in, in this, this um, you know, issue with the homeless encampments, um, as after Lieutenant White was here the other night, we, I had asked him if it's time that we talk to our representatives uh, from Waterbury here about, you know, what's going on at the state house to start to address some of these issues that are creeping up on us and before we know it they'll be in our lap. Uh, I hate to see the time when, you know, homeless is laid out on Bank Hill here uh, with needle syringes and other kinds of stuff deterring tourists from going to the restaurants and mm -hmm. uh, you're seeing tidbits of it starting to creep in uh, and maybe it's time that we request our representatives to come in here and ask them uh, what's what's taking place in order to you know try to prevent this type of thing uh, and question why agency of transportation is allowing this to take place because it's just going to further escalate uh, if it gets a if it gets a foothold so that's basically it in a nutshell uh, I mean I'm I'm hearing more and seeing more uh, about what's happening in Burlington and it's going to start to resonate out uh, and we're all going to be faced with it so I'd rather get a handle on it sooner than later if, if it's possible. The only thing I can think of is Chris is have like Tom write a letter to, you know, Agency of Transportation to see if, you know, at least are they aware and are they going to cons consider doing well, I, that? I'd like to have Tom and, and uh, Teresa come in and sit with them as well um, and let them know that we're aware of right. the ongoing problems here uh, in Ask them basically, what is, what are you as legislators doing about it, uh, if anything? You know, uh, we got to start holding people's feet to the fire if we can. I can go ahead, Tom. No, go ahead. I can check in with our state police too. I mean, the I wouldn't assume that if there's a homeless camp that, in fact, those people aren't known, not just to the police but to social services and. If they're there and they're essentially legally camping on state land, I've heard from other folks who the state has taken the same position. Um, and to some extent, um, there's homeless everywhere. If they're essentially legally camping on state land and they're not causing a problem, I've talked to other towns and they've said, that's fine. Um, they can, you know, oftentimes the weather drives drives their decision making. Um, but in essence, some towns, their, their approach has been, there's nothing illegal that, about what they're doing um, by, you know, what are, we, what, what are we trying to accomplish in essence? Just the question, I guess. Alyssa, you are. No, I just had along the same lines as Tom. I just have to say, like, you know, I take the Route 2 commuter to Montpelier, so I think I, pa I pass the two by the pines and I pass there's one closer to Montpelier. I mean, I'm just going to say it was nine degrees four weeks ago. So one problem I'm thinking about is why someone is choosing to live in a tent in nine degrees and why they don't have suitable shelter. And I think just like that is a baseline, I would hope that folks have a place besides a tent to live. And then again what the problem is I understand you know I also have run into folks at the train station when I was getting the bus who were acting in a concerning manner and I did contact the trooper but someone living their life not in Waterbury we as a select board I just don't know what jurisdiction we have again I think we can press on state policy I don't know what it is but if they're not you know I feel bad that someone is living in a tent and I don't know what we're doing yeah. about it if they're not causing a problem in the community. Yeah. Unfortunately, some people choose to live out, you know, you have the whole problem with Burlington where people camping out the encampments. It's not that they, they don't want to live in a shelter. They would rather live in a tent encampment. Not that that, you know, sometimes a lot of people don't understand that rationale, but I, 
I've never lived in a shelter, you know, but I've heard, some, you know, some horror stories, but I know there are some really some good quality shelters in, in this state. You know, you get some in bigger cities that are probably a lot more dangerous than I think the shelters are in our state. But I don't know, other than what Tom so, laid out. And I guess, um, is your concern public safety or is your concern absolutely. social services? Absolutely, it's never been anything but that. Okay. Yep, absolutely public safety. And uh, I've just seen the results of, you're suggesting that our towns are allowing it to happen because they don't see it as an issue, but then they get consumed with large amounts of it and it becomes out of control uh, and it starts to impact uh, the quality of those communities. I don't want to wait to get to that point. I'm, I'm sorry that it, you know, it, and I don't mean to be in any way, shape, and form, you know, uh, mean about this. I just, I understand. I, I'm smart enough to see the results, you know, results of what other people have not done and what it's got them. And I don't want our town to be that. You know? so, so I brought it to the board to, to discuss, to see what you guys wanted to do. And if you don't see it as an issue, then, you know, this is where it'll stay. Um, I see it's an issue, but I think, you know, what, what Tom laid out, what he could do initially is a first step. You know, I don't know if, I don't, at least, it's funny, I have not seen that encampment up on the ledges. Yeah, that's, that's why I said it's very... Very discreet, discreet. and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And I don't go down the dump road too many, too many times. Yeah. So. I just don't want to have a, I told you so. Is it the you dump know, road moment. you're talking about or the pines in Moortown? The pines down here in Moortown, yeah, in towards Moore the dump. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else on that issue? Roger. Yeah, when I visited uh, Vancouver over the summer, and uh, they have four city blocks that have been taken over by homeless uh, people, and it's basically they condemned any commercial business uh, over those uh, four blocks. Yeah. And you know that if, if that were to happen to Waterbury, we don't have uh, four blocks to give them. Um, but uh, you know, I don't think we're quite there yet. Uh, so I do think uh, a letter to find out whether AOT is, can do something about it would be appropriate. Um, and then uh, about in terms of getting our representatives here, I think uh, it's not a bad idea. I think maybe we should consider getting up some issues to talk about strategies that where we want to work together <coughs> on not only homelessness, but right. a number of other issues that uh, you know, are going to come before both us and the state. Yeah, I think just expressing our concerns about, you know, what other communities are being faced with and, and trying to just trying to prevent. I don't think that's a bad thing mm -hmm. you know, to try to prevent it from if we can. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if any of you watched the Channel 3 News the other night. They had a young college student, senior college student down at the college here in, in Burlington talk about the incidents that he's had with uh, the growing crime rate and, and the homeless and the you know, he's being chased down alleyways, his, his vehicle windows has been smashed out, he's been robbed, uh, assaulted, a number of different things. And, and mm -hmm. just as, this is one individual. Uh, yeah. yeah know, they, had, they had 25,000 uh, incidences down in Burlington last year, record number. Um, you know, that, that and mm -hmm. it's. Our, our, our overdose, and I call it overdose, that's what they talked about the other night, of, of child uh, ingested cannabis uh, is up 1,500% in the state of Vermont. Yahoo, you know, we're getting the results of legalizing marijuana. It was controlled, I think, more so before it was legalized, and now poor, it's... Poor parenting. Whatever it may be, you know, yeah. we'll be, the issue is, is compounding because yeah. we're allowing it to. The to edibles look, just look like candy and food. All right, exactly. Yeah. The collateral damage is going to outweigh the benefit, I'm telling you right now. I mean, I think our takeaway, though, and Lieutenant White made this point when we were there, is that we in a 
as a community are investing in having two officers. And it's not perfect, and they've got short stuff. But I'm just saying, so I think <coughs> mine, I'm, I'm not trying to poo-poo public safety. I, you know, I think we as a board and the community supports that, and we have resources. But my point, I think the sequence of events is real. I have not heard any directly linked reports. Again, I'm saying I'm going by. It seems like people who are living out of a truck, it's a couple. I see them. They've got their stuff in the back. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I think it's a good or thing, but I haven't taken to concern myself with it because it wasn't in Waterbury and I didn't see it. I didn't get any reports of it impacting anyone. So I think getting the info of what's going on and then knowing that we have resources. So if it is a problem, you know, I think to be honest, AOT probably also has an enforcement problem. I just saw they're hiring for mechanics. I mean, they need people to plow the roads before they're, you know, it's, I'm not trying to again, poo-poo the other way. It's just figuring out, all right, what are they going to do about it? And if not, is it something we're taking on and how? Mm -hmm. um, but So I think Tom getting the info is a good idea. I mean, it's just discouraging. And maybe, I, maybe I'm the only one that feels like this, but it feels like the world around us <coughs> is just falling apart at the seams. And I'm so concerned about it impacting our own, impacting our own community that I have to speak out about it. And you know, to some people, I might be this SOB that's talking about these types of things, but it's because I care about everybody, you know, it's not, and I just don't, I just don't want us to be tore apart as a community and, and wish we didn't live here anymore, you know? Oh, I agree, I just, if I lose my housing, I might have to move out of Waterbury because my rent right now is affordable because I got it four years ago and our landlord owns the place outright and hasn't raised it because he's a good guy. And if I lost it, I mean, there was a posting for $1,000 in Montpelier I sent to two bookstore employees in Waterbury and said, oh my God, someone's got an apartment? Texted my friend in Montpelier. It was the talk of the bar in Montpelier was the one bedroom, a thousand. Of, like when people say housing crisis, I'm not, and that's again, I'm not trying to poo poo, but like this is really, you got people who, it wasn't, it, you know, it isn't often a like straight street. It's like I had rent, I was paying rent. I was throwing my 600 bucks a month. I had a job, here's my rent. That's how it penciled, because I was making, you know, I do my budget, I know what I make, and I know what percent my rent is. So if you had a great situation paying 600 bucks a month, and that goes away, there is just nothing. And I just can't underscore it enough. So I think that's the other side of what are we doing on housing, because if you got someone kind of on the cusp, and something goes awry, and you lose one of these, like, golden, you know, opportunities still, I can't imagine living in a tent. And fortunately, I have friends, and I'd probably crash on someone's couch, but... Is scary. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have more and more people that are getting closer and closer to homelessness. <coughs> I'm telling you. And that's, that's it. And it's eating me alive yeah. to think yeah. about it. Okay. Uh, I think there's. Uh, oh. <coughs> take the hand it's up. Hard there. to see. Uh, is that that's Glenn? That's Glenn. Yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? Um, I just want to offer one extra bit of uh, comment to Chris's point. Um. Not to suggest you're, you know, off base at all, Chris. You know, just one thing I would suggest is if you're seeing running from a compost, there is always the likelihood of a black bear. They look seriously like humans running at night. Um, but that being said, the whole, you know, danger factor is absolutely real. Um, you know, and I understand your concern and, you know, interest in uh, remediating this issue sooner than later. Um, I don't know where the black bear got his headlamp, though, Glenn. That was the only... Oh, oh there was a headlamp. Okay, I didn't hear that. Oh. Yeah. No, I, and again, Chris, I'm not trying to say it didn't happen. I'm just trying to say always... It's like when you lose your keys, you're like, who took them, right? Nobody took them. It never happened. It's just you misplaced them. It's an accident. And I do the same. We all do. It's human. But I guess my point was just as far as housing goes, you know, like we're a farm, right? So we have a certain governing rule set through the Agency of Agriculture which allows us to have seasonal employees. And so we had literally a situation where through Front Porch Forum, I was engaged. Actually, I didn't get engaged. I just didn't respond. But like somebody had said that there's an encampment up here and it's homeless and transients. And, you know, it was really insulting because I had staff members that were there living there. And some of them couldn't, one of them couldn't quite afford to find a place through the winter. And I had issues with insurance, COVID works. I mean, it was miserable as a friend and an employer um, because technically it's not legal uh, to have staff, uh, farm staff through the winter. So I went out on a line and I'm not going to admit any kind of, uh, you know, admission of guilt here, but the reality is people are hurting and I was trying to do my best. I think, uh, I know Lieutenant Government, uh, Lieutenant Governor now, uh, 
uh, Zuckerman had previously worked on this uh, issue and rec- at least out, you know, made a recognition of the fact that we have laws that don't allow uh, farm housing through the winter uh, full time. So I think there's a match there. And I know I've worked on uh, the Davis Dairy Farm. You know, we do a number of pieces with hemp farming and, and we are trying to be a positive force in the cannabis industry, as many know. Um, we have some really great surprises coming in store uh, for the year ahead that I think will be a great asset to this community and ideally not bring lurkers and all sorts of, um, you know, sort of the element of, I think, Chris's concern uh, that will linger. And, and, you know, in some cases, it's great because when people do linger, they recognize assets of this community and take control and take a stand and actually say, hey, this was what matters. Um, and we want to encourage that, I think, uh, as a community. So I guess my point is, if we want to do anything significant, we could look to pairing uh, farm staffing options uh, for you know advocating at a state level and making that happen uh, this session so that we have year-round farm staffing um, potential, uh, working with people that are hurting and need help um, and pairing them in ways, because every farm I've worked with knows exactly how hard it is to get help. So right. just an encouragement, and I'll, I'll back off from there. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Glenn. Makes sense, Glenn. Champlain Housing Trust had a farm, work, farm worker housing program. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let's move on to the last topic before we go into the budget. Uh, real quickly, we got something from the State Tax Department, uh, 2022 Equalization Study. Our education grant list is $775,000 and change. Equalized education grant list is uh, $1,026,000,000. So our common level of appraisal is 75.69%. Do you know if that's different from last year? Yeah, it's a big difference and it matters a lot. So last year, the common level appraisal is 86.46%. So it's gone down almost 11% in a year. And what that means is if, you're, if your house in our grant list is valued at 300 grand, you'd take that 300 grand and divide it by the 75% we have now. So really, the, from the state's perspective, from setting school taxes, your house is really 400 grand. Um, so when you fall below 85%, you have to get a reappraisal. Uh, Townwide, um, we will receive a letter uh, this summer, June, I believe, uh, directing us to do that. There's a process to challenge your common level of appraisal. Um, I can work with our assessor to see if there's any way to challenge it, but usually it's pretty ironclad. Um, How long ago was the last uh, town appraisal? I think six or seven years. So okay. normally, sorry. 2014. 2014. Okay. So last year, excuse me, where last year we were what? 83%? 86. 86%. Now we're at 75. Now we're 75%. Yeah. So here's the challenge. Um, so we'll get a letter in June and we'll have to commit to a schedule likely beginning reappraisal in 2024. Challenge is um, right now 15 of 20 towns in Washington County are below 85%. So they're they're all facing the same thing. Statewide, something like 65% of all towns are also there. And in another year, you know, 80-ish percent will be there. Mm-hmm. So there's been um, a market failure, I guess is the way to put it, in that there's simply a shortage of listers to do the work. Um, right. And um, I'm as, also meeting as with everything. Yeah. I'm also meeting with Thursday uh, on Thursday with Ted Brady, who's the head of the League of Cities and Towns, and we're going to talk about this is on my agenda because um, this has been coming for a long time, and everyone saw it coming. And I want to say to Ted that VLCT was not proactive mm-hmm. at all, and if VLCT had been training and, ar- and arming, and you know all these people who could be appraisers, we'd be in a better position. Um, VLCT is working on a bill that would um, change the process and change the process they would form regions, probably counties, um, but they'd form regions and every town within the region would get reappraised every eight years. And at least that way there's similarities because everyone's in the same region. You have some, hopefully some cost savings by doing it all at once. 
Um, and there's a set schedule, so you know you're not sort of falling um, to the whims of the, of the market, which has changed rapidly in the last few years. So um, we'll see where that goes. But the challenge is right now um, is that there's simply no one to do the work. Dan can do some of it. Dan can't do it all. He's going to have to have partners. Um, it's a two-year process at best when the people are there. It's a few hundred grand in all likelihood. Um, so we'll do the best to commit to a schedule to the state, but hard to do the work when there's no labor. Um, and the state, I'm sure, recognizes this, given two-thirds of us are in the same boat. Um, but Dan and I were talking the other day, and uh, there's a list of certified Vermont appraisers, and we're going through the list, and it's like, well, that firm's on the list, he retired, that firm's on the list, that individual is 79 years old, that individual is 77 years old, so there's, um, you know, there's no college degree in, in listing, so there's it's just something where the... Do you have to have a general appraisal designation to do uh, town-wide reappraisals? I don't know the legal designation, but you have to be certified by the state. There's a list of certified appraisers. Because there's a and a general, which is like they, they could do all commercial and farms. And there's except, probably some specialty to, to do municipalities. Right. I don't know that, but I know there's more of a general one that does more residential type appraisals, which is a much lower, yeah. lower benchmark. So by the time we're done, we'll probably have a common level appraisal of, you know, 60 percent, 65 percent by the time we actually get reappraised. Yeah. Do you recall, and I used to know a fair amount of this process, but a lot of it escaped me for some reason. What's the sweet spot uh, in, that you, that a town, what's the sweet spot when it comes to common level of appraisal? Uh, and and it, does it, go, it goes either way, right? If you're, go, some towns are way. appraised at 110 yeah, plus percent. It can go either way. The, the idea is when you're done, you're at 100 percent even. And then, you know, typically your, your, your CLA falls a couple percent a year as the market moves. So 10 percent is, um, I don't want to say unprecedented, but it's quite rare. Yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, that's why I asked you again, you know, because that's, that's a large percentage drop. Um, my next comment is the fact that you don't have the skill people out there to do that, you know, what are we going to get for accuracy when, when this finally is over with? Um, I think we'll have accuracy. I think it's just going to take longer than it normally would take. Mm -hmm. Funds, well, right? We transfer. My understanding, it's expensive, but we do. I know yeah, last year we did an extra transfer, right? Yeah. That's in the budget today. Okay. I'll give that to you. Yep. Any further questions on? <laughs> Not an exciting proposal. Um, we can ask Ted about the AOT policy as well. That's another. Right. Topic. Okay, we're moving on to the budget discussion. what you've seen and what you'll see today and then the library which you haven't seen but that board voted on it today um, our increase would be uh, less than a penny um, but then what we haven't and the reason I don't have a final number is we haven't finished the final 2022 numbers and where the town ended but it looks like the town ended with a pretty good surplus that will carry forward so I Again, I can't promise a tax rate or a total increase, but it, it looks like um, at this point we'll be in a range that's um, somewhere between, I think at the worst, probably a 3% increase, which would be a penny and a half, and hopefully something quite a bit lower. So some of that will depend on and the big numbers. You know, we're through about, we'll be through about half today, but public works capital side is a very large percentage of it, so that, that will drive much of it. 
I'm some of the best news today. Yeah. <laughs> would, yeah not promising. Would, would, would that include, I know we have a significant number of projects that are going to be done with ARPA. Are you kind of figuring that in your overall? No. Um, no. I'm, I'll have an ARPA request for you. But that would just be money. That's money separate, so other separate from the from general yeah. expenditures. Okay, fair. So this is, um, aside from taxes, general fund revenue and expenses, and then we get into uh, what we call the MBLF, so the Municipal Building Operating Fund, which I can explain some of the mechanics. But the yeah. couple couple big numbers, a couple important numbers, I want to highlight. Um, so the first is, so the very first two lines, tax interest and penalty. Um, those numbers you actually vote on, the, uh, they're, they're in the warning, they're the first few items in the warning. Um, I think just about every town votes to charge the maximum interest and penalty. Right. Um, but in theory, um, you could reduce those, or the voters could reduce those um, well, if we they have, voted that part down. We have charged less. Due to COVID, during the, in the COVID years, mm -hmm. but I can't see after COVID that we probably want to go back to a standard level. Um, and then going down the page a little bit, there's a substantial number. I've penciled in $96,000 for the village admin service fee. That is the town charging EFUD for. And that number is preliminary. If anything, I believe that's going to increase a little bit between now and the final. But that's a portion of my time, a portion of uh, some other staff time in the building for work we do on behalf of EFUD. It's about 30% of my salary and benefits, for example. Um, and then a little bit below that, you'll see the number for the pilot, which is $350,000. So the pilot is state-owned property, not forest land, state-owned property. Um, you'll see this current year, or sorry, t last year, 2022, we actually got almost 390,000. Um, so I went back and I looked at the last 17 or 18 years in our system. Pilot grows on average about 17% a year. So it's really tempting to budget 388. Um, mm -hmm. The challenge is within that growth, there's three years where it went down dramatically. You know, 80, 100 grand. So um, there's always a little bit of risk there. We don't actually know that number and get that payment until November. Right. Um, so you're and, budgeting on the conservative side then? Yeah. So right. hopefully we'll get the less than we got last year. Or at least or 400 ish. Um, and then a little further down, there's that 92,000. That's. Um, that's a similar thing. That's essentially a pilot on forest land in the town. That number has been much more steady. Um, hasn't ever really moved. Uh, just goes up a little bit each year. Um, and then further down, there's 105, and I'm going to move that around, but that's just current use tax revenue, so the state makes you whole for land that's in current use. Yep. Um, and then going a little bit further down to the clerk's side, you'll see $80,000 in 2023. And the budget last year was 100, but we only collected about 75,000. Um, that's driven to a large extent by not just the real estate market, but by refis. And with interest rates up, that's, that's dried up. So I think 80 is a, is a better number. <clears throat> yeah, it might be a little high, actually. Might yeah. be a little high, but, um, but it's, I think it's a good number. To all, go all depends upon what the yeah, well, interest we'll market is. Yeah, budgeted at uh, the uh, last year's actual. We I can do so that, well. and I think above that, the adjustment service fee would go up and offset any cha net change there. Mm -hmm. um, going a little further down, um, there's fifty thousand dollars from the tax stabilization fund. That's been a number that's been budgeted for a while and there's a there's actually a board policy adopted related to that so it's well within the policy but that fund is around a million bucks uh, so it's in great shape mm -hmm. so those sort of total general fund revenues are 
lower than last year by a little bit, taking away the ARPA, which was a big one shot. Right. Um, about 2% lower. But nothing really major occurring, and the, the reappraisal revenue is a good chunk of it. Sorry, not the reappraisal, the corpse fees. Um, so you're not putting any ARPA money in this year? Not putting any ARPA money in here un until it's approved at least but, from the board. From the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll look at bridges next week. Sorry? We're going to look at bridges next week. Yep. Um, on to ge general government expenses. The regular pay is a good chunk of the, of the town hall staff, uh, excluding uh, Bill Woodruff. Um, and then the work is in a separate line, and those lines are really consistent with the current year budget. Um, the health insurance is just based on people and their plan choices. I'm part of your culprit, sorry to say. Um, going down a little further, about halfway down the page, there's a $10,000 light item for professional services. That's, that's down quite a bit, but um, much of that was a bunch of your consultant fees you spent to hire me. Um, and then a small item in the grand scheme of things I want to discuss. Um, I have $35,000, sorry, $3,500 in there for a payroll system. Um, so the town uses, and this is also part of my VLCT conversation, the town uses um, a suite of software packages by a company called Nemric. Um, Nemric is, um, PLCD. Really, 1980s, 1990s software. Oh. Um, Bob Butler, our IT consultant, um, has twisted my ear a bunch about some of the concerns he has with Nemric. Um, so the biggest risk that we have is payroll and employee data, um, some of the sensitive data there. So. <clears throat> Once we get through the budget, get into the summer, I'm going to work with Michelle in accounting to see if I can identify a modern payroll system. Um, part of the benefit of that system is right now for timekeeping, we're paper. So any modern system would have time clocks that feed into the system. So at Public Works, you would punch in and out. So better than paper accountability, not that I don't trust our employees, but anytime you got to punch a clock, it's, I think, a, mm -hmm. an improvement. Um, yeah. So there's some gain there, and then from the employer perspective, um, you know, if you're getting a loan and you need a copy of your most recent pay stubs, you have an app on your phone oh, where you, you pull up there if you want to get your W-2, same thing. Um, so there's be some benefits from their end. Um, and then again, all the modern systems also have the ability to punch in and out with your phone, but only if we let you do that. So, you know, if you're at a conference, we can turn it on and off, for instance, or if your job requires you to travel around, maybe not be at the office first thing, we can do that. So there's there's a lot of options. 3500 bucks is an, is an estimate. Wouldn't start January 1. Probably would start mid-year, late in the year, or even 2024, but I'm just hoping to get some approval and transition things there. Mm -hmm. And would this be an annual cost, or is this like a... Uh, one time upgrade yeah. for 10 years or whatever. No, there'd be an ongoing annual cost. Mm -hmm. I think there'd be some better accountability with it too. Mm -hmm. um, and then better security. Yeah, cyber security. Uh, mm -hmm. But there'd certainly be an ongoing annual cost. The, you know, the, the analogy I make with the software we use now is it's, um, it's like going away on vacation for a week and you hire your neighbor's kid to mow your lawn, which works great, <laughs> versus having a car dealership with three acres of landscaping. You don't hire a neighbor's kid, you hire a professional service company. Um, mm -hmm. I think we need to hire a professional services company. Um, Nemric, um, every town in Vermont uses Nemric because Nemric has a state contract for the grand list. Mm -hmm. So because we have this statewide education tax, they've got to know everyone's grand list. Um, the state put that out the bid a few years back and Nemric did not win the bid. Mm. So we're moving off of Nemric for the Grand West side of things. Um, I don't have an exact date. I think it's in a year or so. 
Mm -hmm. um, is this, isn't Nemrick like kind of a creature of uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns? It's a private firm. Um, the LCT actually tried to buy it a few times. Okay. Um, just never happened for a bunch of reasons. Um, but it's. I thought they, they had bought that, but maybe it's, I'm wrong. It's, it's just really old software. Yeah. Um, it works fine for our purposes, but I've got. Gets it done. Gets it done, and it gets it done, and it's really cheap. Um, I think it's worth to spend a little more money on the payroll side. We'll have to spend more money on the grand list side when the time comes. What's the cost differential, do you think, about it? It can be as much as you want. It depends on what company you What know services with. you get. There are companies that have a full service software suite that can work for a town our size or can work for New York City. Um, right. We don't need to spend 50 grand a year on software, but I think a little bit more on the payroll side would be useful. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wouldn't rush into it. I'd start exploring this in some detail in the summer. Michelle, the uh, the bookkeeper, would really be the be the lead contact there. And if she's, I think her input would be probably more important than mine on which system we choose. Can you try before you buy? Well, there's all sorts of demos. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Um, just going back up to the uh, uh, professional services, uh, mm -hmm. the, uh, we'll be losing our uh, municipal planner uh, this year. Are we planning any sort of funding for the search or for the placement? I don't Is think we'll need to pay for the search. I think we'll just advertise that. Uh -huh. um, and that's not a huge cost because I don't think we're going to struggle to find a Vermont candidate, so I don't think we need to do anything beyond, you know, VLCT in seven days. Mm -hmm. okay. um, the interesting thing about filling that job is, um, and I've learned this recently, is um, it's actually not my hire. The, I believe the Planning Commission makes, the planning a, commission does it? makes a recommendation. Uh -huh. um, so they do it with, with our funding? Correct. So <laughs> they can recommend. You can say no. So, so you think that'd be a, a hard hire with no. that state? No, I think that I think there's. I think there are a lot of people. I think, I think we're an attractive town. A yeah. lot of towns right. have deputies. Um, there's regional planning commissions around the state, so I think there's a good candidate of folks to choose from. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think we would see people that would have to go out of state. No, I don't think we will. I think we'll advertise that, and you know, seven days Vermont and right and the VLCT normal sources. And, so is ten grand too much, or is that uh, just a, a, a reasonable you, number to? I think, that's, in there? I think that's a reasonable number. Um, I don't think we're going to spend a lot on that particular position to fill it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. Um, legal services. I'm just proposing to budget our historical average. Um, there was a much bigger budget in 2022 that we didn't need. So I think 12.5 should, should cut it. Um, there's a separate legal services budget um, in planning for some of his issues. So this is, in essence, legal services I need or legal services the board might need. Um, and then going down a bit further, about two thirds down the page, there's $61,871. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, we'll get to it on the last page of this, but that's that municipal building operating fund. So this is, um, this is just costs that are transferred to that fund. So this is a revenue in another place in the budget. Uh, but this, um, this is a, a good chunk of uh, Bill Woodruff's expenses. This is a good chunk of uh, debt service on the building. This is a good chunk of the power and, and the systems and all those things that we spend money on. Mm -hmm. um, and then near the bottom of the page, you'll see the transfer to reappraisal fund. So in that fund, at the end of 22, we have a fund balance of about 200000 So putting another fifty into it should get us to a great place where when we've got to reappraise soon enough, we'll be able to use that fund balance and not hit the tax rate. Yeah, we'll be digging it out of our so, butt the last minute. That's the hope. That's Do we have anything in there now, or is this the first? About 200 now. <coughs> yeah, 200. So 200, hopefully move to 250. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, 
county taxes, I don't have a number from them yet. Um, but I just want to be increase as an estimate. Hopefully it's not too much higher than that. We have a budget meeting, right? Did we report us that email there? So okay. Tom, quick question. The county email? Yes. yes. Yeah. I think it's next Friday if anyone wants to go. Unfortunately, I'll be away to the county tax <laughs> budget we'll have, we'll have their number then. <laughs> What was that for? I'm sorry. Elizabeth. The county, because he was just saying, I don't know what the county tax rate is. Oh. And I think Karen sent yeah. us an email and I said, I didn't know there was a county meeting about the county tax rate. And evidently there is, and it's there next is. Friday if anyone's interested. Yeah, county taxes, that's for the sheriff's department, correct? Um, I believe that goes towards to the sheriff's department. Sheriff's. Um, yeah. Courts. Clerks. Clerks. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. My question, I'm sorry, Tom, was um, Youth. when it comes to reappraisal, mm -hmm. just thinking about this reserve fund here for the reappraisal, uh, will that be a bid process or how will that work as far probably, as hiring somebody? Probably a bid process. It may, it may be that um, Dan has some partnership opportunities with other town appraisers nearby and we can uh, cobble something together and negotiate it directly rather than put it out to bid. Uh, mm -hmm. What I'm hearing from other towns is they're putting it out to bid and no one's responding. <laughs> no kidding. So that's where we're at. But fortunately, we've got, maybe, you know, if, maybe VLCT's bill will get through and that will give us a little daylight about getting in a better place. Yeah. Yep. Going back to county expenses, we talked about possibly using the sheriff for doing some law enforcement for speeding and stuff like that. I assume yeah. that number wouldn't include that. Would not. That's a, that would all be a fee for service. Yeah. Right. That's not part of this. So that'd be a different, just a separate line item for fee for service. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we still considering doing that? I don't know. It's, it seems to be a big buzz thing in the community speeding. Yeah. That's for another meeting. I think, uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's the conversation we had last time, right, about that position. We, did. we had that kind of incorporated some of these things and, right. and what our overall approach is. Sorry. Um, going down a little further, you'll see um, a line for 17300 Yeah. And that's uh, most of that funding um, is for fireworks on the 4th of July. There's a couple other minor expenses. Um, so we've got, um, I actually just got late today, a cost estimate for this year. Um, so that's, there's an increase, there's a discount if you buy the fireworks in January. Right. Um, so that's mm. a bit of a pressing issue. It doesn't need to be cited tonight, but it should be decided soon enough. And then not on the agenda tonight, but the rotary is also asking for $5,000 for the concert and park series and Al Lewis will be here at a later meeting to discuss that one with you. Not to be cranky, but to the what I thought was valid point about senior center, you're showing this as a line in general government. So I guess like it feels like we're doing a bit on a whim. Again, I have no problem with the request and I understand we'll hear about it in full, but to me this is the funky like we've got some general government lines too private, local nonprofits, which again, I have no problem with, but what we're doing there and what we're doing as a special article. So I think is this, there consistency? I think this one is because we purchased the fireworks directly, the rotary does I'm not saying the fireworks. No, I'm she's saying, talking about the, the concert series. The, 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 the fireworks, I totally understand why that's a general government. Um, but I guess a park concert series funding for that, again, I'm not disputing um, mm -hmm. that, and we can litigate that next week. I guess I'm just raising like it's another piece that's in general yeah. government, so I just feel weird when we're then saying like, oh no, we make it be a separate article to so the senior center. I put it here just to try to get yeah. the bottom line reasonable. It can, it can be elsewhere that I, that's not my, doesn't impact me whatsoever. So totally, and again, I'm not. Morning, that's fine. Yeah, I'm not necessarily proposing that. I just think we should have some <coughs> sort of consistency about how these things are done. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I don't mean to keep throwing questions at you, Tom, but uh, so you got 17300 in here for, for the uh, 4th of July <coughs> fireworks. You mentioned a possible increase if we don't get them. What would that be? Any idea? I think it's 
Okay. Yeah. They're up, like, from what I understand, fireworks are up about 35%, or as is. Which is reflected and, here. Right. Well, I, don't, I think that's reflected partially here, but it's also just reflects that we always seem to pay in January to get that early discount. No, I just didn't discount. know what the in increase was. Uh, yeah. Just. Um, and then going down a little bit further, um, there's 14,000 14,500 for new equipment. Um, that is um, a list I went over with um, the IT consultant. Some of that is uh, just some aging IT equipment. Some of that is some license fees that we just need to spend. Um, there's not much we can really do to avoid there. That's that's not the payroll system, anything related to that. It's essentially equipment in this building that is getting old. Mm -hmm. I know that feeling. <laughs> um, so preliminarily, Alyssa, the senior citizens gave me a while back, an increase of 2,500. So tonight it became 6,500. Mm -hmm. So I will, I will change. See, that. and I actually give you credit. I thought you were matching because she said 20 percent. And to be fair, that is a 20 percent increase on that line. They just had the separate 20k as the special article. Um, so maybe that's. So Again, I have no, I have no qualm <coughs> with the senior citizen request, and I have no qualm with including part of it in the thing or the whatever. I just, as a new board member, feel like I'm walking in with a very random rationale as to why things are in different mm -hmm. places. Yeah, I think it's just more transparency to see that the people have some say. You know, we'll put some of it <coughs> in the regular budget, and the rest is up to the voters. And again, no discredit to Rotary, but why should I not say that about the $5,000 for the concerts, which is a totally new request. Shouldn't oh, I know. That, I by that principle, be a special article. Yeah, I had a long conversation with Al Lewis about this one. He'll, I'm not going to go into that. He'll go into some of the things, but there's, he's going to give you a 40-year description of what Rotary We uh, is specialize in long descriptions. Again, it's not, right. I think it's a justified expense. I'm just, you know, consistency. Um, going down a little further, you'll see there's $15,000 that goes to the cemetery fund, so that's in essence an internal transfer of property tax dollars to that fund. Um, it's not in front of you tonight, but that board um, approved their budget uh, last week, so that'll be in front of you pretty soon. Um, and then Alyssa, to your point a little further, so RW is here, but it's not the full funding to RW. So the other portion is in uh, the planning budget. And as I said with the other ones, if that's moved to other places, that's fine by me. Um, going down a little further, public safety, the, the state police contract um, has the lowest rate increase of any contract this town has signed. So that's good thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> um, Very. Yeah. And then you'll see the Waterbury, the Waterbury Ambulance Service has a $25,000 increase, and that's based on $26 per capita fee. How much longer do we have our contract for the state police? I have to check if it's, I, it may well, have. I think we got another couple of years. I think it ends at the end of 24. We just signed that this. Well, right, we just signed last contract. year, I think. So yeah. I think we have two more years. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Let's hope we get longer than that. But. <clears throat> so between general government um, expenses and public safety expenses, there's a forty thousand dollar increase on a on a budget of a little over one point five million. Um, and then the last page um, is the municipal building operating fund, and this is. Um, this is one of those pieces of mechanics, um, and and maybe this is something that we want to discuss and change, not for 2023, I don't think, but going forward, because in essence, all the expenses in this fund are in other departments. And so Bill thought some years back, and the board agreed that it would be most transparent if there was a separate fund to show the true cost of owning and operating this building. Um, but in other towns, they they say, well, it inflates the total budget and looks like double counting. Mm -hmm. 
And so looks like what? I'm sorry. Double in essence, counting. It's, it's double counting in some respects because every expense in this fund is elsewhere in the budget, and it just transfers in here. Right. And so it, it makes it a little harder to look at the big picture and say our true operations cost this much because it's really this much, but you've got to net out the expenses that are transferred elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So it all just it all depends on, on how the board wants to show it. It's been shown this way for a long time. I don't want to change it in the short term, but in the long term, you might want to think about it differently. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the revenue in, the transfers from the general fund, um, come from other places in this budget. Um, and then the library pays a significant chunk of it. And that, I believe, is all based on square footage. Um, and that, that cost is reflected in the library's budget. Um, and then on the expense side, um, I might have some, before we're all said and done, I'll probably have some minor administrative changes here because every year we we look at um, Bill Woodruff and Al Tusky and others and we look at, um, they track their time weekly. So we then look at the last few years and the trends and make little adjustments based on their payroll and fringe and how we think we're going to spend it going forward. Um, the good news is you've got a really good new building so there's um, there's no significant item that needs to change um, building maintenance is up a bit, but that's really consistent with the actuals, but uh, much of that is just your standard cleaning contracts, things like that. So, you know, the cleaning, the fire alarms, the, the boiler inspections, all those things. There's nothing in this budget pressing where, where I'm asking to spend, you know, 30 grand of new money on a project or a new roof or anything. Mm -hmm. um, so roughly 20,000 of Bill's salary is town related, the rest is really e -fund. Uh Well, that's that's that would be Woody's here. So that'd be his yep. salary and friends. So the way it works is he is technically an e fund employee. Right. Um, and then he's charged off, yeah, he's charged off in different departments. Right. So some of it is in the building and some of it is in the highway department. Mm -hmm. um, I'm technically a town employee, and 30% of my costs is charged to E5. Charged to E5, yep. So. Can I ask a quick question? Mm -hmm. Why the rents for the steel room are so low? <laughs> it's a good question. I feel, like we, <laughs> I feel like now that COVID's over, it's actually getting more inquiries. Than what is the cost to rent the room? I think it's, it's $25. It's $25 for the first two hours and $10 an hour after that. So it's about $85 a minute for an entire day. And is there a differential if you're a non is there a reduced rate mm -hmm. for a nonprofits or anything like that? Nope. No. Everybody pays no, that's way low. We brought it up for planning and zoning. Like, I think it's a fee, right? We don't have to. <coughs> but do municipal, it the like, it, you know, different, like a conservation commission, they don't have to pay for it. <coughs> if, it's a, if it's a government entity, right. if it's a municipal government municipal. entity, you don't pay. Right. But the state of Vermont has got their digs on this room, and they're and they should the pay. Department of, yeah. Uh, yeah, they, and they do. Um, every should pay a higher rate. Right. Right. So, <laughs> oh, we there's. Don't do in looking at the fees we charge, quirks fees are set by law, yeah. generally. Um, the recreation department fees historically are set by the manager. Right. But there's a schedule of fees on the town website that's set by the board. So I think changing those fees is going to have a major impact on the budget. But I think we get through our January meeting schedule, and if maybe we just pull the schedule of fees, and that's on the agenda in February or March. And, uh, just to be clear, I wasn't so much asking if the fees could be raised, but why they're only at seven fifty on the budget instead of. Like, if I read this right, right, it's like not, a not a lot of people right rented the room out. Well, they, yeah, the actuals were seventeen twenty last year. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. that, I was just, I was just wondering if you have. Hang on, me. Let me just pull it up. Oh. Okay, and nothing in the budget for twenty two. Because we didn't rent it for COVID. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I didn't yeah. look at the actuals from those other years, so yeah. we can we can change that. Yeah, but you know, as far as what we what we charge, I so mean, we're we're back to really 2018, 2019. Right. right. Yeah, it looks okay. like we looks like we did as much as 3,500 in a year, which is great because that money is paid to clean the carpets. I'm sure and things like we used to do it for free. We used to be able to rent this room for free. That's it. Okay. Deserve it. 
That's a good catch, thank you. Yeah, but is $25 for two hours enough? No, no, no I don't think so. By today's standards. By today's standards, that's just like. But there are a lot of. It's still free. There are a lot of <laughs> it's basically free. That appreciate the low fees. Pay more electricity. If it would please the board, we can, I think when the dust settles in the budget, we're through our January yeah. schedule, yeah. we can just pull the schedule of fees and yeah. we'll, put it, yeah. we'll put it in the parking lot sure. for now. And yeah. yeah. I don't think, it I don't think by going up a little it. bit, it's going to hurt anyone by to rent this room out. Right. And market rates are much higher. Exactly. <laughs> go find a room else. Go, go to St. Leo's Hall or something. They'll see what they'll have to pay. Well, this room has the integrated... Oh, I know. It has more where St. Louis yeah. Leo's Hall, I don't think, has near the feet. actually, you'll find it interesting. I think we were in your town, right? When the projector broke, and I did the call, I made a call. We were able to buy a couple bulbs for a minimal couple hundred dollars, but the company that I called told me it would be like $10,000 to replace really? them. Really? Hmm. So the yeah, state that's a lot of twenty-five dollars. <laughs> so the state uses this building. Don't they have their own conference rooms? But they're booked. They're booked. Wow. So they, they call us and come here. Too much talking, not enough doing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to interrupt. That was probably a small. Good small catch. No, good catch. We we, we like stuff. extra money where we can get it. And that's all I had on the on this portion of the budget today. The next meeting, which is a week from Thursday, will be bigger numbers. Um, I'll, I'll try to be as concise as I can and have the government all outlining the major choices. Um, just want to give um, a 30 second update, Public Works, no need for executive session, I don't need to use names. Um, we are interviewing tomorrow for a mechanic. Okay, good. Um, we'll see where that leads, but it's nice to have a candidate at least. And then one of our employees, um, got injured, not at work. So he's got some medical clearance to work as he can, but he really can't right now. Um, so that might be a longer term issue he's got to address and we've got to figure out. Uh, fortunately, the weather this far has been good. Um, but someone, be someone who plows uh, in other words. Yeah. Can I back up here real quick? Sure. I, I don't know how it escaped me, but um, my mind must have been someone else. The transfer to the reserve, you, so you got that <coughs> as a blank. Um, yeah, so there was, um, there was a small transfer last year, um, but nothing big planned for the building. Okay, so is this the same reserve fund that was set up to have a fund that's built up over time to address issues pertaining to the degradation of the building it, over time. It could, it could be. <clears throat> okay, because that was one of the things that I had mentioned maybe that possibly ARPA could, mm. we could take a shot and, and put that in there, inject that in there because I'm seeing things because that's my world uh, that are that eventually need to be done here in this building that uh, will end up being costly at some point. Um, and I was just hoping to yeah like yeah. like the reappraisal fund <coughs> build a fund so that it's there. What I have to check on is <coughs> if we use ARPA to fund a reserve. Okay. Um, but. What we could certainly use ARPA for is to use ARPA to pay for reappraisal directly, and then that reser reserve stays with the town and could be transferred to some other purpose. Mm -hmm. um, That's so, an interesting idea. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I had suggested maybe 150 of ARPA being put into a reserve. Uh, any money that we put in this reserve in the past has been eaten up. Uh, with mechanical issues yeah. in this building, and it just wasn't getting anywhere. <coughs> um, the exterior of the building is going to need some work here before too long. Uh, in fact, maybe sooner than later, because the same thing that's happening to this siding has happened to the Waterbury Center Fire Station, which we had to address last mm -hmm. year. And I forget what the cost price tag on that was, but it was several thousand dollars because yeah. uh, they had to fix when. 
and I didn't know, of course, I didn't see them doing it, but <coughs> when they put the siding up on this building, you're supposed to put a piece of um, uh, aluminum flashing behind the joints, mm -hmm. and they use uh, ice and water shields instead, so consequently, I guess, ice and water shields falling down, exposing them, you know, surface behind that, and the water's allowing to get in behind that siding, and eventually will deteriorate that. So, um, same thing happened up Waterbury Center, and we had to address that issue. Um, and I don't know, <coughs> well, the parking lot itself, that's <coughs> probably under the paving CIP, I would suspect. I mean, that's starting to fall apart as well. We actually addressed the uh, sidewalk issues back in the day, um, so I think we're good there. But there'll be issues that'll come along here before we know it uh, that are going to cost some major major money. I just wanted to be prepared for that. So some of the yeah. All right. Yep. And you've got my art proposal for the next meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Small amount. So. I would say it could be all of it if you wanted. <laughs> yeah. That uh, third bridge. We're not. We're not. Uh, the town is not renovating a bridge on Main Street my first year. <laughs> <laughs> the underneath the railroad trestle. <laughs> it's going to be a maybe my we could name third it or fourth year. Okay. <laughs> the Tom Lights Memorial Bridge. Yes, yes. This traffic diverted by thanks to Tom Lights. I still think there's a little bit more. There's still a little bit more work in the Main Street project next summer. That's poles. Well, the poles got to come. Got to get the poles. <laughs> that never happened this year. No, there's one wire attached to all those poles. <laughs> so yeah, I think that I think that bridge will come two or three years, I hope. Does McDonald's well, still right do on that target. extra work? To, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right on target for uh, what they had suggested back hmm. when we had this conversation several years ago. Yeah. yeah, my understanding was it was it was just outside of the. At some point, you you increase yeah. the Main Street project too big, and there's an Act 250 permit issue. Um, but then it's not, wasn't part of the roundabout, so. Hmm. Bunch of hogwash. Yeah. I'd say Bill has strong feelings about that. Yeah. <laughs> Just one other note here, not that it has any impact on us, but typically we hire SP Paven as our paving contractor. Um, I just recently heard that they're being bought out by Jay McDonald. Oh, Is that right? Huh. Is that Since Paul? He's retiring? Is Paul SP Paving? Um, Reynolds. Uh, John Reynolds. John Reynolds. Yeah. Huh, he re he's retiring or selling out? I suspect so, yeah. 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 Hmm. Interesting. Is there any other business that needs to come before us? Just just one thing I want to say. Prayers and it, it's, it's amazing what's happened with uh, DeMar Hamlin. If you haven't read, he's out of the hospital. You know, the football player. And he's be, being has been transferred to Buffalo. So it's amazing how much prayers, and it's really neat to see someone who had a GoFundMe of twenty five hundred dollars and raised eight point eight million dollars. Yeah, but it's funny that they're still not telling you what the, what was the cause of his accident, other than I was he, went down, he went down on a tackle on an impact, but that. I don't know that that's the cause of the problem. It's cardiac arrest, as far as I understand. Yeah, cardiac arrest could be. It's an electrical thing. It's versus. It's not like a heart attack. But, you know where you have a constriction. You know, it's something that electrical that goes as a result of a sudden in impact or something happening. And I'm I'm just not going to lose any. The, the poor guy's out of the hospital. Yeah. Pretty cool. Ready for the Super Bowl. I'll Motion move to, to adjourn. Second. We're adjourned. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.